Hello and welcome to East Baton Rouge Parish School System as a brand new teacher, either new to the district or new to the profession. We are very excited to have so many new faces and so many new and innovative people to join the team and to help improve. Uh, increase student achievement and excellence in our East Baton Rouge Parish School System. We are the instructional technology team. So we are here to help support students, help support teachers to integrate, uh, integrate technology into your classroom and into your instruction on a daily basis. Uh, this is our team led by Nikki Washington, who is our coordinator of EdTech. Uh, we have Ashley Callix, Shar Coates, Brittany Davenport, myself, Felicia Gaff, and Angelica Johnson-Smith. Each of us are <clears throat> spread across the district and we each support a certain cluster of schools. So this is where you can find out which instructional technology court uh, instruction technology facilitator is the support person assigned to your school. Uh, again, if you see our faces on campus, please do not hesitate to stop us and to ask questions or to get the support needed in order to ensure your students are having the very best experience as well as preparing them in a, a 21st century classroom. Our goal, again, is to assure the successful integration of technology and to support student achievement. So this will look uh, different on each campus based on the needs. We provide needs assessments to each school to identify what your strengths are and what areas you may need additional support in. And that support could look like a professional development training at the district level. It could be professional development at the school level or even at the grade at your grade level or individually we uh, do coaching we model lessons we also uh, identify teachers who may need to be mentored to support them our goal is to support students and teachers in any way that we can and the great thing is is that our team is full of certified teachers so we are also in the business of showing supporting and developing best practices in the classroom East Bamberg Parish uh, is a one-to-one -one district, which means that each student in grades pre-K through 12th grade each have their own device to use in the classroom. Now, this may look different um, from grade level to grade level, as well as from school to school. Uh, but our main thing is, is that we want to make sure that we're providing our students with the skills and the tools to ensure success. We are also a single sign-on district. This means that um, throughout all of the platforms that we use, we are using our, a single sign-on, which is your East Baton Rouge Parish School email and your email password. So any platform, anything that you need to have access to, you will use that um, email and password in order to get in. Although we are a one-to-one -one school district, we are not 100% on devices. So we do not expect to always see students on devices 100% of the time. Our main goal is to show them how to best use technology. And in an age of AI, we want to make sure that they are using them in a beneficial way and not a handicapped way. So we want to make sure that teachers understand that although we have devices for every student, every student, uh, you are not expected to have students on devices all day long. There needs to also still be opportunities to have conversations, to collaborate, to um, debate, and then especially in the lower grades to still be able to have um, work those fine motor skills. So this is just our department's disclaimer to let you know that although everyone has a device again, it is not expected for students to be on devices 100% of the school day.
If you are able to access this presentation, then more than likely you already have your credentials. But if not, you're probably in the process of waiting for your credentials. Once you receive your username, you will then go through the PASS system, which we are going to share a little bit later in this video on how to create a password for your uh, email address. And then again, once you have those um, pieces, then you're able to sign in or log in to any of our platforms that we use in the district or that are district supported. If uh, some of you all should have possibly gone to our district website. If you have, you will probably, you probably have run into our quick link page. And this is our main hub to get into a lot of our different district platforms. One of the major platforms that you will use on a daily basis is Clever, and you will receive information about Clever a little bit later. You also have access to get into your email address, uh, J Campus with your attendance. You are able to get to the IT help desk, which is also going to be covered in this presentation. And then also your payroll, which we know everyone wants to make sure that they're able to keep track of their paychecks. So this quick links is very important. This might be a platform or the page that you want to bookmark so that you have easy access to it in order to go to the different um, platforms. Um, platforms. You also have access to PASS, which is what I was mentioning when it comes to setting up your password for your email address and in order to have access to the other platforms. So this is just a quick overview of who we are and what we do. You will also hear within this presentation more information about using Clever for instructional purposes. You will go into Frontline for professional development purposes. And we will also um, show you some other key tools and that you can add to your toolbox to help you have a successful school year. This video is on stubs. Our students frequently say, Miss Smith, I forgot my username or Miss Smith, I forgot my password. Well, I have just the tool for you for those cases. Stub simply means student usernames, barcodes, and status. As it says here, you can list or print student users and you can also automatically fix logins, which meaning if you're having login problems or your students, like I said, have forgotten their usernames or passwords, this is just a tool to help you out. So you can access stubs by opening up a new tab and I'm just going to type in the web address. It is ins.ebrschools.net. All right, when you get there, this is how it looks. My um, login information is auto-populated, but you can just log in using the same thing that you use to log into your email and everything else. Most of our things that we use here in EBR are single sign-on, so you can use the same login to log into Stubbs. So your, whenever you log in, your home screen may not look like this, but you're looking for Stubbs. I have a little bit more because I do have district access. So when we're in Stubbs, sometimes you will see some extra things that when you're getting yours, you may not see all that. It's okay. I just have district access. Your Stubbs will be... Um, a reflection of the site that you're assigned at. So you will just have information regarding that site. We'll just have information regarding that site. So when you click stubs, this is how it looks up on entering, okay? So like I said, if you are assigned at the first school that's here, it's Arlington Prep. All that you will see is that school. You will not see other school options. Whenever I go around, I do have a drop down. I have to find the school that I'm servicing. But you will see your school there. So then you have options of how you want to display the usernames and passwords. Do you want to see all students? Do you want to see students in a grade, in a particular grade? Do you want to see students in a particular homeroom? Or do you want to see students for a particular homeroom teacher? 
It's also a drop down box here where you get to select some date options. So you wanna see the roster current as of these days down here, or do you just wanna do currently enrolled? I've never changed this before. I always leave it on currently enrolled because I want the most current information as it is regarding enrollment because we do know that that can change every day. So I always want the most current. Then you have an option of how you wanna see it. Do you wanna see one complete list? Do you wanna split, split by grade, homeroom, or homeroom teacher? Okay, then you also can choose some different formats to have your list. So you can do a verified list. You also can create barcodes. I'm gonna press make barcodes. So these are how the barcodes look. All this barcode do is pull up this student. It's just a, it's an identifier to that student. Then you can go to, you can make stickers. These are labels. Okay, so you see that it has each student's username and password. Guys, you have to keep this information safe. You cannot just leave it laying around because it provides instant access to the student accounts, like any assignments and stuff that they've completed that will be in their drive, as well as access to their grades. So whenever you're using these things, you have to be really careful. Please do not print out these labels and stick them on the student's device. So that means that anyone who wants to take that student device now can log in as that student. So please just keep it safe because you know, even your stuff, please don't write your information down because if you write your username and password down somewhere, students can get in and they can, they now have access to your grade book. They can change your grades, they can do attendance. They can act as if they're you and do all types of things. So just as you keep your information safe, also keep their information safe. So usernames and passwords should always be kept safe. All right, you also can do teacher sheets. All righty, and this is a cool one. And this is something for the beginning of the school year, like now, um, it's for handbook handouts. So if you press that, it's for our student rights and responsibility handbook. Everything is here. So all the parent has to do is scan this code in order to sign for this student. So that's really, really cool. Very techy and quick, easy. All right, so I just wanted to show you what was available, like what are the different things that you can make. So when you go down here to this first student, it gives the student ID. It gives their username and it gives their password. Now let me tell you something about this password, username, all of this. This stuff never changes. So a lot of times if you have a fourth or a fifth grader saying, Miss Smith, I don't remember my username or password, fairy tales. Because sometimes, you know, over the summer, of course, we forget things. But even um, the start of this year, I've helped several students and they're like, oh, I remember now, because it doesn't change. The only thing that changes on here, you see how the password is this, and the last numbers are 12, that's a 12th grade student. So when this student was in sixth grade, it said 06. Just like you have a ninth grader here, it says 09. So they keep the same information. The only thing on their password changes is the last two digits. I think um, kindergarten, is zero, zero, so when you get down to those lower grades, they have some other numbers, but I know first grade is 01, second 02, and so on and so forth. So when they're, t most of the time when they're telling you they forgot it, they, they really didn't. But in case they really did, you don't even have to waste much time. You have this amazing tool at your fingertips to quickly solve that problem, all right? And there's one more thing that I love that's on here. So it, every student in East Baton Rouge Parish is automatically assigned a library card for the public library. So everybody have their um, East Baton Rouge Parish public library card number right here. So if you're teaching and you would like to utilize some library resources, you can get their library card number from here and you guys can access any resources that you can find on the public library website. So this is Stubbs. These are the very cool things that you can do with it. I hope Stubbs can help you with your kids who have these forgetful moments. The help desk system is what you're going to use anytime you have any kind of issue with technology. 
So to get to the help desk system, you're going to go to helpdesk.ebrschools.org. And you want to make sure that you sign in with your EBR username and password. There is a guest section on the help desk that you can use without signing in. However, signing in has a few different benefits. One of the benefits is you can have some information saved and preloaded here on your ticket so that you don't have to input the same thing every time you do a ticket. For example, if you are a teacher and you have one room, you can update your room to be a certain room number so that every ticket you put in, it will have a room number attached to it. Of course, it will also have your name and email address and you can add a phone number if you want to, but you absolutely don't have to. Another benefit of signing in is that you're able to view all of your tickets. So clicking this button will bring you to a page that will show all the tickets you've submitted so that you can kind of keep track of progress on different things that you have input into the help desk system. So the other thing here is your school slash site. So this does work based off of the internet that you're currently connected to. So let's say you're at a PD on a different campus, but then you remember that you wanna put in a ticket for your computer back at your classroom. Just make sure that you check this to make sure it is indeed the place that you are currently at. And then we have all of our different categories. So most of them are pretty self-explanatory, but I will just go through and give you a quick rundown. So Chromebook, of course, is going to be for our student devices, unless you have a teacher Chromebook. Desktop and laptop is going to be for any issues you have with your workstation computers. Smartboard is going to be any issues with your interactive whiteboards. EdTech is going to go to our team, and that's going to be any issues with Clever or any type of training requests that you might want to put in there. Internet filter is for if there is a website that students are accessing that you believe that should be blocked, you can put that there on internet filter. And reversely, if there is a website that you would think that should not be blocked, that is, you can put that request there as well. Um, login and security, pretty obvious. Um, network would be internet. Printer could be an issue with your printer, and it could also just be a request for someone to come connect your printer for you. Quote requests, security system, and telephone services are mostly going to be used by administration and clerks. Those are things that kind of deal with the school as a whole. And then software and applications, if you have any issues with using things on the computer. And then we do have this miscellaneous category here. However, I would highly suggest to avoid using this category as much as possible. Really try to hone in on a specific category just because the miscellaneous category tends to kind of get lost among all the other tickets in the help desk system. So if you put something in under miscellaneous, it can take a lot longer for your ticket to be reviewed. So once you've selected a category, um, depending on what category you selected, it's going to ask for different information. So for a desktop, it's going to ask for my room number, which of course, if I have that pre-saved, it will be populated here. If you're able to put the serial number or the barcode, you definitely can. But the most important part of any ticket is going to be the problem description. So when you're submitting a help desk ticket, you want to be as specific and detailed as possible. This is really going to help get your ticket answered in a more timely manner. So just think about it this way. You have a tech coming to a school with like 20 tickets. And one of them just says, my computer is not working or my computer is being crazy. And then another ticket says, hi, every time I log into my computer, when I click on this icon, I get this error message or this thing happens. Which of those tickets is going to be easier to answer? Obviously, the one that's more detailed is going to be a lot easier. And so the tech is going to be more inclined to deal with that issue first. Also, there are some issues that may be able to be fixed without a tech even having to come. So having those details in there can really help you get your ticket answered faster. Now, some categories aren't going to ask for all of this information. For example, if you're having a network issue, that's just going to ask for a description. So as you can see, that is the most important part of every ticket. So once you submit your ticket, you will be able to, of course, view it under all of your tickets. And because your email is attached to it, you will get an email that your ticket has been submitted 
and any updates that are done to that ticket, you will get notified of that as well. So if a tech responds to it, asking for additional information, or if they come and work on it, all of that will be sent to you through email. So that is a quick rundown of the help desk system. I hope you found that helpful and don't forget to use it anytime you have any kind of tech issue. Previously, I spoke to you all about our East Bandridge Parish School District being a one-to-one -one district. That means, again, that each child in grades pre-K through 12th grade have their own individual devices to use during the instructional day. The devices that we are using are Lenovo Chromebooks. This year, we had a refresh for our pre-k through fifth grade students so they each received a brand new device to use this school year. In order to maintain um, the conditions of the Chromebook or object devices, we want to make sure that everyone understands how to best manage and take care of these devices. So on this slide, you have access to a Chromebook management presentation, which is going to go through uh, in detail some of the do's and don'ts with our Chromebooks, as well as what are the best things to use to keep them clean, things that you should do and should not do. And so it just kind of walks through the different process. It also helps you with identifying the different parts of the Chromebook. Um, it just comes in handy, especially when it comes to having to put in a help desk ticket if something happens if, um, to one of the Chromebooks, if there's damage involved, you will know exactly how to identify uh, the specific a thing or feature that is not uh, performing the way that it should perform. You also have just a few other uh, helpful hints and tips that will help you when it comes to uh, testing time and being able to make sure that your devices are on the most current version of Chrome and then also being able to Make sure that your devices are test ready when it comes to LEAP 2025. Then we go into the process of taking care of your devices, um, ensuring that we don't use a heavy saturated water and soap on the devices, that the best material to use are the microfiber um, cloths or soft towels to make sure that the devices stay clean. Um, we know that we have lots of germs going around, especially after um, COVID. We want to make sure that we are keeping our students healthy and also keeping um, the life of our devices take intact by being able to take good care of them. So you, uh, this presentation is more so for our classroom teachers, but we also have a presentation that you can use when it comes to presenting to your students and being able to help them understand what are the best ways and best habits of taking the care of the devices so they will be able to have them and use them throughout the school year. So you also have this presentation uh, which goes over again how to take care of it. We go into your daily management system as far as especially in the elementary schools and even some middle schools to pick up and the drop off at the beginning and end of the day, being able to make sure that each student is using the same device each and every day. Uh, we want to make sure that students are assigned a Chromebook and we just kind of show you some of the different systems that are available that you could possibly use in order to help out. We also provide some quick tips as far as troubleshooting, some things to try out before deciding that you need to send in a help desk ticket. So making sure that you have 
all the things and um, examples that you need in order to ensure a successful school year and to maintain the life of the device. We also provided a video for you that you can look at. It's just like a little small skit to share with the students to show them the do's and don'ts when it comes to using our uh, devices on a daily basis. So our theme for this school year is empowering teachers and empowering students. So we want to make sure that we give you all the tools necessary to be successful. One of the main things that we want to make sure that you remember is that Chromebooks need to be updated on at least uh, a weekly basis, if not twice a week. So this presentation walks you through the steps for checking for Chromebook updates as well as updating your devices. The reason that you need to make sure that your devices are updated is because as we know Google provides lots of updates and new features and so do all um, many of the other programs. They're constantly improving and making things easier and providing more actions or features. And so in order for the devices to be able to have access to these features, they need to be updated. So we are asking that at least once a week. So maybe every Friday, have your students to do a hard shutdown. This means not just for them to close their devices uh, when they are finished using them for that day, but also going through the process of actually doing a shutdown. And so that way, automatically each device will receive any updates that come through for any platform. And so when they return on Monday morning, they should not have any hiccups when it comes to uh, to completing assignments or to uh, participating in lessons because they have all the necessary updates. Another thing that we need to make sure of is that our device again is on the most current version of Chrome. And so this device will show you how, to, uh, this slide will show you how to do that as well. So we're trying to provide you with everything that you need in order to make sure that you will be successful for this school year, especially when it comes to technology. Uh, the next thing that we have access to or that we are sharing with you all are troubleshooting ideas. So we most schools have a an active board in every classroom. However, we have several different versions of active boards in, in your classrooms. Some have Promethean boards, some have a, uh, AE boards. So we know that there are different things that may need to happen for different uh, devices or different boards. This presentation, if you click on here, it's a hyperlink to some ideas of things that you can do in the classroom to help with making sure that your device is working pr uh, properly. Sometimes it's very, very simple things that need to take place in order to make sure that you can continue instructing. So we have, um, you're able to make sure that you have all the plugs plugged in, that all the buttons that need to be turned on are on, uh, making sure uh, that if it is a, an A and E board, it is like a big Android tablet. So making sure that you actually have the computer part that is attached to the back of the screen has been turned on. Um, if you have problems with your touch, uh, making sure that you have those wires connected correctly. So this just gives you some troubleshooting ideas. We have another opportunity to support you and things to do before trying to put in a help desk ticket, which is our if then chart. So it gives you some ideas of things that might happen or that could possibly occur with Chromebooks in your classroom. So if this happens, then you would do this. So for example, if no sound 
on the headphones and make sure the mute button isn't pushed. So you have just some quick things that you can do that won't scare you to the point of thinking that you may break something. Um, and then if those things do not work for you, then it is time to put in a help desk ticket and call IT out in order to support you. One of the things that we want to make sure that everyone understands is that we, uh, well, we are using our active boards and using our Chromebooks that, again, technology is not 100%. So there are also going to be days when you will not have access to it. It may be something with the connectivity. It may be something with the district Wi-Fi. There are several different things that may occur that will enable us from using technology. So best practices says that we're always prepared and always have activities and lessons prepared that may not even uh, need technology. It's probably preferred that you have a combination of non-technology activities and technology activities. Technology is best used when you are trying to reinforce and enhance a student's skills on something that they learn. But always our first teachings and our best teaching comes when we are doing things and we are showing the, uh, and getting understanding of the concept and why we do what we do and what the results of that will be and how it connects to past learning and future learning. So again, the technology component is just there to reinforce that. So. I want to make sure that you all have a very successful year and we will share a few more tips with you all on how to start this year off with a bang. To access all of the apps and websites that we use here in the district, you're going to want to go to our Clever portal and just keep in mind that if you are a new employee, you must have access to J Campus first in order to access Clever. So please allow up to 72 hours for your account to sync with the Clever portal. And anything that J Campus has is what Clever is going to show. We aren't able to go in and manually add any of your classes or your students. It all has to sync from what you have on your J Campus rosters. So to get to Clever, if you're on an EBR device or if you are logged into your EBR profile right here, you're going to come to the bookmarks that's right in the left hand corner, ebrschools.org bookmarks, and just click on Clever. And it'll bring up this page that we were already on. You're going to click log in with Google. And either choose your name or type in your credentials. This will bring up your Clever page. Clever looks different this year than it did in the past, but if you're a new teacher, it doesn't look any different to you because this is the first time that you've seen it. So this is what you'll see. You'll have your school name in the top left corner. You'll have all of your resources right here. All of the district resources will be at the bottom if you continue to scroll down. And remember, again, it syncs with what J Campus has. So you may not see every resource that I have right here because you may teach something totally different. So if you are a math teacher, you're going to have access to math apps. If you are a science teacher, you're going to have access to science apps and so on and so forth based on how your courses are coded in J Campus. There's a Clever library so that you can browse other apps that are not on the Clever um, page, homepage. And if you want to just add those in, you, you would just click on it and click where it says install and add it to your page. So I'm going to get to pages in one second. But you can see right here, you'll just hit allow and continue. And now this app has been added to my page. So if I click on pages now and go to my teacher pages, you're able to add as many teacher pages as you would like. Clever is going to give you two 
to start with is going to have your first initial and your last name. And you're going to have one that says just you. Right now, you can see that most of my pages that I have created says only you, meaning that I'm the only one that can see it on this one. Only me and one other teacher can see this page. And on this one, me and any student that I teach can see it. And I'm going to show you how you can change those settings at any time. So if I go in here to my Clever Practice page, you can see that that app that I just added from the library is now here and available for my students to use. I can hover my mouse here and change the name. And I can also change the description and the icon right here. So that's some ways that you can personalize it. But the bulk of your information that you need to know about Clever um, teacher pages is that you can add whatever apps and websites that your students use on a daily basis or a weekly basis here on your teacher page. And that way the students will have access to it right there. So if you come up to the top, click on add. These are the things that you can add categories. So newly added bell ringers, those are categories. You can add PDFs. So you would upload that from your computer. You can add links and you can also add apps. We have a YouTube channel that shows you all of these different things um, in more detail of how to add them. But for the sake of this video, I'll add an app just so you can see how easy it is. So we'll click on app. And then we'll start typing in an app name. So let's say I want to add in Zern. I start typing it and it pops up automatically. I'll just click it. Click add Zern. And now add, I mean Zern is right here. And I'm able to change the category that is in by just simply dragging it down. Again, we have more detailed videos on our YouTube channel. But just know that your teacher page is a lifesaver for you. You can put all of your things there and you can always come right up to the top where it says more page actions. Click on share page and decide who else gets to see this. So right now you see only one teacher can see this, but I can come here and either let all the students that I teach have access to this page and they'll be able to see it on their Clever portal or I can decide which class I want to see this. So if I click this one, only this class will be able to see this teacher page on their Clever portal. And then I'll click update and it's done. The last thing that is really important, if you are a kindergarten or pre-K through third grade teacher, probably pre-K through second, but it just depends on how your students are. Clever has Clever badges so that they can log in and you can print those badges out yourself. You don't have to wait for someone on your campus to find you and print those out for you. You can always print that out yourself by just coming down to my students and then clicking on student roster. So once you click that, a list of all of your students will populate here and you can just come right up to the top and click download badges and it will open all of your student badges in a PDF where you can print them and do whatever else you want to. Or if only one student lost their badge, you can click on that student's name and then navigate right here to student tools and only view that student's badge and print it out. So again, we have more detailed videos step-by-step -step of how to do everything on our YouTube page. So check that out. But for the most part, that's what you need to know about Clever. It syncs with J Campus. Your teacher pages are a lifesaver. And you can print out your own student badges if you teach in elementary school. Hope this helped. So Google Classroom is a way that we can communicate with our students and pass along assignments and announcements to them as well.
Google Classroom is located in your Google account and you have access to this in your app launcher or by going to classroom.google.com. To log in, you would use your EBR email and your password because remember, we are a single sign-on district. So the app launcher is located here and then you would click on the classroom icon. I'm probably already logged in, but if I was not logged in, let's log me out. Let's see if it will allow me to. Okay, well, I'm thinking. If I was not logged in, then I would log in using my Google credentials. And here we are right here. Once I'm in, it will list all of the classrooms that I have either started or I am a part of as a student. Maybe you have gotten a classroom um, or added to a classroom that your principal has where she places announcements, or maybe you're a part of a cohort. Um, you may also be a part of those classes as well as, as, well as those classes that you actually teach. Um, also, with the new Google Classroom setup that we have with our Clever Sync, you may already have classes that are there that have been provisioned to you with the students who are rostered to you in, that, in those classes. So if you have specific sections that you are rostered to, such as English language arts, science and social studies, math, um, those each one of those subject areas that you're rostered to will give you a, a classroom, and these are your classroom tiles. And at the bottom, it will ask you to accept those uh, classrooms. Now, it's very important that you accept those classrooms, and it looks like this that you accept those classrooms because they've already been provisioned for you. So should you see these courses, these courses have been populated for each one of those classrooms that you are rostered to as a teacher, you will need to click on accept. Do not click decline because if you click decline, then we have to go through the process of putting those classes back to you. So these courses have already been populated for you. You just need to accept them for them to be visible for your students, as well as for you to actually use those. If you have not accepted those courses, they will not be um, visible to anyone except for the primary teacher. That would be you. Also, um, as mentioned before, if you are using GoGuardian in order to sync your classrooms to um, GoGuardian so that you can make sure that you're monitoring their internet use, you have to accept those classrooms first before you can sync them. So always remember, do not click on decline, click accept. The good thing about the Google Classroom and Clever Sync is that should a student um, drop from the course or move on to a, a, another classroom or be placed with another teacher or go to another school because it is rostered through J Campus and through the Clever Sync, those students will be removed automatically from your course. So you don't have to go in to take them away. I know before we had to give the students a code. We have to remove the students if they were no longer there. You don't have to do that anymore. So this is um, a part of our Google Classroom. Google Classroom, again, is another component that has lots of features to it. Even though we are not specifically using it for, um, I guess, online teaching and learning, you can use this in so many ways. Um, you can use it as a communication tool. In addition to it being used as a communication tool, you can also use it as a hub for resources and information. Um, this is just a quick peek at our um, STF classroom, and this is a classroom that we have, and here we can place reminders and allow them to um, communicate through the stream, and these are features that you can turn on and off. Um, if you wanted to place a morning announcement here, you can do that as well. In addition, there is a classwork tab where you can place assignments here. Um, if you are using PDF features, this will create copies for your students, and they can each get one and turn those in. Um, and again, this has so many different features to, um, to it, but in order to get all of those features and all of those trainings, reach out to your school technology facilitator so that they can reach out to us, especially if there's a great need, or you can reach out to us directly and we can come over and show you how you can use Google Classroom to enhance your best teaching practices on a day-to-day -day basis and to increase that instructional classroom time that you need so much. GoGuardian is a digital platform that helps teachers to manage their students' devices and keep them safe online. Um, this is done remotely, and this is done by syncing your Google Classrooms that have already been provisioned to your GoGuardian. Um, this will allow you to control your students' activities online. You can do things such as open and close tabs, 
lock and unlock student screens or even limit the amount of tabs that a student has open. Um, with GoGuardian, as a teacher, you can see what's on the screen of every student who is in your classroom or who is out of your classroom, and it helps those students to stay on task and engage in the learning process. Um, another way that GoGuardian helps us is that you can chat with the students and the students can chat back with you. Um, this allows you to assist, assist them when they need that help without disrupting the class or taking away from instructional time. You can guide them through the process just by simply looking at their screen. And lastly, you can access the student's browsing history in case you need to go back to make sure that they were engaged and on task and to see what sites they have been visiting. So in order to get to GoGuardian, you would go to GoGuardian uh, account.goguardian.com and it will bring you to this screen that will ask you to log in to your account. Remember, we are a single sign-on district, so we will sign in with login with Google. Once we click on login with Google, if this is your first time doing it, it will ask you for permissions to use the account or to sync the account or use your password. Allow those permissions so that um, you're, you're able to get access to GoGuardian. Once you're in, your screen will appear and um, yours will be in teacher mode. Now, mine's may be a little bit busy because I have an admin account, but I'm going to switch this from admin to teacher so that you can see how it looks on your end. It will send you an afternoon, a good morning or a good afternoon message, and this is where you will see all of your classrooms here. Um, if you have no classrooms here, it's because you haven't added them. But the first thing that you need to do is you need to click on import a Google Classroom. Now, I also want you to realize that in Google Classroom, if you have not accepted your provision classes provided by the district, then when you get to this window, it will say that you have no classes. That's because you have none that have been uh, connected. So before you even get to GoGuardian, you need to go to your uh, Google Classroom, accept those classes, and then sync them to your Google account, your GoGuardian account. Um, mine has already been, um, mine has already been um, placed in here. So it's already been synced and it told me that it was imported on July the 25th, 2024. If it had not been imported, then it would allow me to check this box right here and click on import. What that does is that it allows it to come here and it accesses all of the devices of my students that are in use, that are available. So I'm going to click on start class and this will allow me to see the devices of the computers, um, of the students. Now, just looking at this, it says monitoring not allowed by admin. And the reason for this is because these are all actually teachers. These are members of our STF Google Classroom. And so because they are adults and they have teacher accounts, I can't actually monitor their accounts. However, if they were students, then I would be able to see what they had on their screen as students. Here is how I can go about organizing them, either by first name, last name, or if they're online or offline. And then I can say how many I want per row. I can just do one per row where I can just scroll down, two per row, or our max per row, which is, I think, uh, 10, I want to say. Let's see. Maybe it is six, five or six. At any rate, the buttons at the top will allow you to um, control the student's devices as well as present um, a live version of a website that I have open. Again, you can allow students to have their tabs open by clicking on opening tabs. And again, I would be able just to click those students um, who are online to give them a specific tab. So say, for instance, I want to send these students all to Amplify. I can select them all as an entire class. Or if just maybe three or four need to get there, I can select each one of those and shoot that link over to them. Once they receive that link, they don't have to click on anything. Their screen will open automatically to that link. So that saves you time as well. Again, we spoke about how that you can chat with your students or call your students. These are settings that you would have to put into um, to your Google Classroom. So for one-to-one -one calls, uh, conference calls, lectures and presentations, make sure that you adhere to the district call policies. But with this, the teachers are allowed to use their webcams. They can record the phone calls um, and students can also view their um, or use their webcam to engage in the conversation. This works well, especially if you are trying to guide somebody, someone through how to work a problem or to analyze text. At the top here is where we turn our chat on and off. And if we have our chat on and off, when we get to our screens, 
there will be a button here that will allow you to chat with your students so they can actually have a chat screen going on where they can ask you questions. This comes in handy if you are doing small group and maybe someone has to use the restroom or someone needs to get a pencil or maybe they're leaving out for speech and you want to keep record of that. They can send you a quick text message or a quick chat through the um, chat feature and that way classroom is not um, interrupted. Our class time is not interrupted. This button right here, it just sends alerts when the students are off task. This means that they are idle for a long period of time or if they ventured off of a specific site. So this will send an alert to that student like, hey, let's get back on task. And also it serves as documentation for you. Now, there are a lot of features to GoGuardian and that is a more extensive presentation. So if you need any more assistance as far as after you're synced to your classroom or even help with syncing your classroom, feel free to reach out to us, any one of us, um, especially your school technology facilitator, they will be able to help you. And if not, as an instructional technology facilitator, we can come over and do a PD with your grade level or with yourself individually to help you to utilize GoGuardian in the classroom. Looking to become a techie teacher, but feel like you don't have time to learn new skills? Well, let us, the EdTech team, help. Join us for Season 2 of Tech Tip Tuesdays, where each Tuesday, directly to your EBR email address, we will send bite-sized tech tips to help streamline your workload. I've always heard that two heads are better than one. Well, let us here in EdTech put all of our heads together with our tech knowledge and share it with the district. So remember guys, technology is our friends, but we must use it to our advantage. So if you want to become a techie teacher, scan the QR code or the bit.ly below. Remember, bit.ly's are case sensitive. So the S, the M, and both T's are a capital. So you will type in bit.ly slash send me tech tips, where technically we're gonna be keeping you in the know. So here in the EdTech team, we love being able to go out into schools and do PLCs and one-on-one -on -one training and whole group PDs, but we can't always be in every school at once. And some teachers just like to learn on their own. So we have two different on-demand PD opportunities. The first is our on-demand PD conference that we filmed this summer, 2024. And this is just a huge resource with tons of videos on different EdTech things. So you can access that by going to bit.ly slash EBR Tech Hero. And once you click on that, you'll be brought to our page. And you can see here that there are hundreds of videos with titles and descriptions. And each video also comes with some kind of resource. So it might be a one pager, it might be a slide deck, but it's just something that you can kind of take away from the session. You can filter it by presenter. So if you do already know someone on our team and you wanna see what they've done, or maybe you are a specific content teacher, we do have some sessions that are specific to content that you can look at as well. You can also filter it by level. So if you are a new teacher, of course, you can filter it by just the videos for beginning teachers. And these are just really cool videos. They are a bit more in depth but they are really focused on specific instructional things. So for example, this is all about test prep. This one's about student engagement. So these videos are gonna be more topical and more of deep dives in how to use technology in your classroom for specific outcomes. Our other on-demand PD is our YouTube channel. So we do have a YouTube channel here at EBR Ed Tech. And we have taken all the videos on our YouTube channel and organized them into playlists. So if you already know that you want to learn more about Clever, we have a whole playlist dedicated to just Clever. And the difference with this versus our PD conference is that these videos are going to be more of bite-sized how-tos. So for example, you're not going to come on here and find a three-hour video covering every element of Clever what you are going to find is little things that cover specific parts of clever so one video on just sending messages one video on just accessing it one video on just badges and what this does is it really just puts the learning in your hands so maybe you already know how to log in and access it you already know how to look for apps but you didn't know about badges 
this gives you the opportunity to go in and watch just what you need to learn. So these two opportunities are really great resources to bookmark and save and keep on hand anytime you have some extra time to just continue your learning because we know that great teachers are the ones who are lifelong learners. So I hope that you find some value in these resources and that they help you become a tech hero on your campus.